Hi everybody, I'm Russ with ESBService.com and today I'm going to show you how to retrofit the new uh, four button digital timer in place of your old Borg timer on your old um, ESB tanning bed. Now for this uh, demonstration here, um, I've removed the cover and I just have a cutaway here just to make it easier to show in the video. But this would represent the cover in the um, position that it is uh, on, the, on the tanning bed itself. So, um, here's the new timer that comes with the kit and the new timer bezel that's needed. And then also there's a uh, spacer and the new overlay. So, when you go to replace this, it's the same instructions whether you're doing a 120 volt or a 240 volt board timer. But this is what it would look like when you start out. So I'm going to take this up and I'll show you the wiring configuration. Right now we have a neutral coming in and we have three black wires and they go back here to the contactor and to the backup timer. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to make sure, of course, the bed is unplugged and I'm going to disconnect the wires from the original timer. And it's not necessary to note the J terminal configuration because it's different on the new timer. I'm going to show you how to correctly wire the new timer right now. So the new timer, what you would do is this. First notice that there's only three terminals on this replacement timer. J1, J2, and J6. Now, when we use the wires here to connect to this timer, we're going to come back here at the primary of the contactor and the first wire I'm going to grab is right here. This is again the primary of the contactor where the main power cord comes in and this is the hot or the black wire coming in uh, to this set of four terminals on the contactor here. So I'm connecting, I'm using this wire here that is on the primary hot. I'm going to connect this one to the new timer on the J1 terminal here. This is the primary hot coming into the timer. Now the next wire I'm going to use is back here at the primary of the contactor. Right here. This is the same side again where the power cord comes in to the contactor. But this is on the neutral side here where the white wires are. So there's a grouping of four terminals here and any of these will do. So this goes to J2 and this provides a neutral to the timer there. Now we have two black wires here left. One goes back to the primary of the contactor and one goes to the backup timer. Now on some models you and with the Borg timers you might not have a backup timer. I'll address that in one second. Basically though, this wire here, this, uh, on this redundant hot wire on the primary of the contactor, I'm going to remove. I'm going to disconnect it and we're no longer going to use that. I'm going to actually just discard that wire. And this is the wire that we're going to use. It goes to the backup timer on the input terminal. Actually, it's marked A1 and uh, 1. This goes to J6 on the main timer here. And now it's completely wired. That's proper, just like it is. So, like I said, the models that do not have a backup timer over here, Instead of connecting it to the back of the wire, what you would do is you would take this wire and connect it onto the very side terminal here of your contactor. There's only two terminals here and these go down to your coil here. And again, it's on the hot side, opposing here on the neutral side. So either of the two terminals will be fine. 
and then that's how you would connect it if you do not have a backup timer. So since we do have the backup timer, I'm going to actually connect it onto the appropriate terminal, A1 or 1. Some of the older ones were um, A1, and the newer ones are 1, and the universal ones have both markings on there like that. So what we will do is, um, at this point, we'll need to get this timer mounted into the cover, as it was before. In order for us to do that, we're going to actually need to do some modification. A slight modification is all that's necessary. You see, um, I will compare these two. This is the style on the original board timer configuration. So when you pull the timer out of your cover, and you remove the bezel from the outside, yours will look something like this. Now, the new timer configuration from factory looks like this, where the timer can, can match up to this as such. And this plastic here helps to insulate from the pushing of the buttons on the new overlay. So basically, we need to take up this space here that's on your cover, since this is what it would look like here. So in the kit, we have provided a spacer, an extra piece of plastic here, to go as such and allow you to put the new bezel onto the cover as such. So this is how it's meant to fit together. take and make a slit in your cover like we did here, you can slip the ribbon cable from the timer through. And then on the underside of your cover, you would take and line up your holes for your timer, your overlay, and your bezel, and the spacer. And you would screw it together. It might be easiest to do one at a time here. and only snug the screws. They do not need to be very tight. And because you're, you're screwing into plastic. So you, if you did, you could easily um, strip the threads out. I'm gonna tighten this down just a little bit. And then you would need to just simply connect the five pin ribbon cable so you cover each of the five pins. And then of course you would reinstall the cover and then you should be done. The timer retrofit kit comes with a uh, timer support bracket like this. It's uh, simply got just two holes in it, and there's uh, two screws for it. If you have a reflector like this, um, usually there's two holes that it'll line up to. Um, a lot of the other models don't have reflectors that come all the way down, and you can just um, screw the screw along the uh, channel in the rail right here. 
and just make sure that you put the bracket in the location where it's going to uh, be right behind the timer to provide a back support. And of course, make sure that it's not going to short out on anything when you do so. So to mount it, I'm just going to take the two screws into the holes. I'll line it up. And it might require bending back a little bit, but usually it's good to just leave it like this. When you put the cover back again, it's got to be um, supporting the timer, just basically so when you go to push the buttons on it, it provides some back bracing.